Hello calculus students. In this problem we're going to use a right end point estimate to approximate the area under the curve and then at the end of the video uh, I'm going to let the number of rectangles go to infinity and uh, we'll get an exact um, value for the area under the curve uh, for this function over this interval. Alright so first we need to set up our formula for the right endpoint estimate. Now remember, in the right endpoint estimate, um, we normally um, start counting from zero, but because this is a right endpoint estimate, um, we actually don't include the leftmost endpoint, and so we start indexing from one, and then we count all the way to the last rectangle, which is um, n is the number of rectangles. f of x sub j, um, this is actually the value of the function at a grid point, and um, that'll actually give us the height of the rectangles, and then we'll multiply that by delta x, which is the um, base, the width of the base. So this is height times base. That gives us the area of each rectangle. And then this sigma symbol, um, this means sum up all those, rec the, all those areas of those rectangles. So we have to address um, the grid and these grid points x sub j. Now to get the grid points, um, here we'll lay out our grid, and we'll start counting from zero regardless if it's right or left endpoint approximation, we um, still index, um, we still um, count from zero. Now we won't include in the left endpoint approximation the x sub zero because j is going to start at one, but I listed it here just so you can see the pattern. So um, when j is zero, it's minus one plus zero times delta x, and um, we haven't um, progressed to the next grid point. Now to get to next grid point, which will be the first grid point in our right endpoint approximation because we're starting to the right so our, our rectangle will be starting from the right endpoint approximation it will be minus 1 plus 1 times delta x so that would be x sub 1 then um, we add another delta x to that and we'll have minus 1 plus 2 delta x's and then for the third point it will be minus 1 plus 3 delta x and so on and so forth so the j's are doing the counting for us and um, they will take care of um, the um, um, the grid points and uh, n is the number of rectangles um, so that's how that's when we stop counting okay now to get to delta x you take the width of the interval which is 2 minus minus 1 which is a width of 3 and then you divide by the number of rectangles of course So um, if I simplify this, um, delta x is 3 over n. That's the width of the interval divided by n. And then we take that delta x and we substitute it into the grid points. So this is the minus 1 plus j times the width of each rectangle. OK, let's take this information and substitute it back into our function. Now, um, our function is 4x minus 1. So we'll have to take x sub j which is given by this formula, and substituted into 4x minus 1. So I'll take minus 1 plus j times 3 over n. I'll take that and I'll substitute it into 4x of j minus 1. Um, and then I'll multiply that by delta x, and that'll be 3 over n. Now I'm going to do two things in the next step. Um, I'm going to factor out the 3 over n. Now remember, j is doing the counting, but there's no j here. So this is a sum of all these terms times 3 over n plus the next term times 3 over n plus the next term times 3 over n. So the 3 over n appears in each of the terms in the sum. So from the distributive property, right, we can just factor that 3 over n out of the sum. It doesn't have a j in it, so it's not being counted. Now I'll distribute the 4. Uh, 4 times minus 1 is minus 4. And then um, 4 times 3j over n is 4 times 3 is 12, 12j over n. And then I have a minus 1 here. 4 min minus 4 minus 1 is minus 5, the 12j over n is still there, and everything else just came along for the ride. Okay, now I have to address this term here. So um, recall that with a sum, um, if you're taking a sum of a sum, well, you just sum up each of the parts. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'll take the 3 over n times the sum of all the minus 5s, and I'll take 3 over n times the sum of all the 12 over n j's. That's this term over here. Now, how many minus 5s are there? Well, this is minus 5 plus minus 5 plus minus 5 plus minus 5 n times. There's n of them. So that's going to be minus 5 times n. I'm going to do the same um, factoring out 
um, that I did in a previous um, step. And I'll take the 12 over n and I'll factor it out of the sum. And then I end up with this power sum here, j equals 1 to n of, of j. So I'm going to sum up all these j's. So this will be summing up from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way up to n. Now these n's will cancel, and I'll be left with 3 times minus 5 is 15. 3 times 12 is 36, n times n is n squared. Now this sum here is a power sum, and um, sometimes you'll see it as n times n plus 1 over 2, or if you distributed the n's and broke up the fraction, it'd be n squared over 2 plus n over 2. Most likely this will be in your calculus text, so you can um, look up that formula. You want to look under something called the power sums, it'll most likely be in the area under or curve section or the Riemann sum section. Okay, the next step is to take the 36 over n squared and distribute it into this sum here. So I have minus 15 plus 36 over um, n squared times n squared over 2 will give, leave us with a 36 over 2 and I'll just put the n squares over the, each other. Plus, and then I'll take the 36, put it over the 2, and I'll take the n and put it over the n squared. That just simplifies to minus 15 plus 36 divided by 2 is 18, the n squareds cancel, plus 36 over 2 is 18, and I have n divided by n squared leaves us with an n in the denominator. We could simplify that further, so our right um, endpoint approximation turns out to be 3 plus 18 over n. So this will give us an estimate of the area under the curve. So for example, if we had 10 rectangles, our 10 would equal 3 plus 18 over 10. 18 over 10 is 1.8, so 3 plus 1.8 is 4.8. So we'd be approximate. So the approximate area under this curve would be 4.8 using 10 rectangles. However, we can actually get the exact area under the curve by taking the number of rectangles and letting that number increase to infinity. Now, notice if you do that, the this sum isn't going to go to infinity, of course. Um, that's because right the rectangle, the little rectangles, um, as n goes to infinity, this is going to get thinner and thinner. So you'll be able to pack more and more rectangles into that um, finite area. And you can see here in the in the estimate that if we let n go to infinity, this term is going to go to zero. So let's anticipate that. So the area under the curve um, is equal to this limit as n goes to infinity of r sub n. But this is just a fancy way of saying we're going to let the number of rectangles go to infinity. We're just going to increase the number of rectangles. I'll put the r sub n formula, which is 3 plus 18 over n, in. I'll substitute that into this expression here. Now, we'll let n go to infinity of 3. Well, that's just going to give us a 3. The 18 over n is going to go to 0. And we are left with an area under the curve of 3. So, in this case, we had an overestimate um, with the, with the uh, 10 rectangles, for example, when we got a 4.8, as you can see. Um, okay, this is how you do a right endpoint um, approximation of a function, and um, to get the exact area under the curve, um, we evaluate this limit as n goes to infinity, where n is the number of rectangles. Okay, good luck.